I've had the iPad mini 6 for pretty much a year to the day, and this has definitely been my most used device aside from my iPhone. Now, right off the bat, we know that the iPad mini 6 does get a pretty bad rap for a bunch of different reasons, but I find that it's actually the perfect iPad for me. And that's coming from someone who also owns a 2020 iPad Pro. That iPad is pretty much exclusively for Spotify and Netflix at this point. Now, yes, right off the bat, there are some negatives to the iPad mini 6, one of them being the price at $499, which ties into the other negatives. People complain that a $499 iPad should have better than a 60 Hertz screen and more than 64 gigs of internal storage. For me personally, the storage thing has never bothered me. The price did bother me at first when I bought this iPad, but just like anything else, you forget about it after a while. Now, do I recommend doing that right now, knowing that the iPad mini 7 is probably just around the corner. Probably not, but I would imagine that you'd be able to get an iPad mini 6 for less than $499 on the used market. Now, I know people use iPads for a lot of different things, but for me personally, I use the iPad for all the content that I create, whether it be videos or for photos. No, I don't edit my videos on the iPad. I do edit all of my photography in Lightroom Mobile, and I have messed around with editing in LumaFusion, but I always found there's no point to editing on this, even though I know that it's capable. I did a video in the past where I was editing some pretty heavy 4K footage on the iPad iPad mini in LumaFusion and it really didn't skip a beat. However, it's just not ideal to be editing videos and color grading and things like that on such a small device. So for me, the iPad mini is essentially my daily planner. I use it for all the videos that I create. So whether it's jotting down some quick ideas in the craft app or writing out an entire script, because I use craft, I'm able to either type it up on a computer or laptop or my phone and then still have it populate on my iPad mini so that when I'm down here and recording, I've got it all here on this device and I can use this as a teleprompter if I want, or I can just have it in my lap for notes. I know some people prefer to use their phones to do that, but I just prefer a little bit larger of a screen. Now, in terms of travel and just day to day with this device, I really like it because of its form factor. Obviously, the iPad mini six with that name mini is meant to be very portable. I had issues with the iPad Pro in the past because of how large it is. I thought that going for the larger size would be ideal, but bigger is not always better. Trying to lay down in bed and watch videos on that thing, whether you're laying down and have it up like this or you just have it down in your lap and you're trying to watch something, the screen is huge. It's so bright and it's just very inconvenient to have in those situations. However, if I have a tabletop available or I'm in a different type of setting where I can use the folio case to kind of prop it up, then yeah, I love watching videos on my iPad Pro, but for 80% of cases, I think that this is perfect and the perfect size. And as you may or may not know, this is fully compatible with Apple Pencil too. So you are able to just magnetically attach it to the side. It syncs with the iPad here, it charges here and everything's good to go. So what are the downsides of the iPad mini six? Well, if we go back to when it first released, I know that people always complained about jelly scrolling and the fact that the screen was only 60 hertz. So if you're wondering what jelly scrolling is, Honestly, I think that it's silly. I also made a video about this in the past that it's nothing that I ever personally noticed. Like the situation that you have to put yourself in to notice the jelly scrolling is one where you'd never actually do that in practice while you are scrolling through a web page, for example. So, you know, people are going back and forth and up and down and they're saying how because of the refresh rate not matching on both sides of the screen that the text looks wonky on screen, but nobody watches videos like that. Nobody reads articles like that. So it's never something that you're going to experience in your day to day and look at as a negative or a reason not to use the device. A lot of times tech creators just nitpick anything and don't actually think about the practical side of these devices. And that's not to give Apple a pass for 499 things should work properly and shouldn't have these issues that people pick up on. But is it a deal breaker at the end of the day for actually using the device? Absolutely not. As for the battery life on the mini six, I get more than a day's use out of this. And like I said, I'm using it all the time to create videos, not only for YouTube, but I do a lot on Instagram and TikTok as well. So this thing is constantly constantly with me, it's constantly on and being used. And I probably charge this like once a week, if that, whereas my iPad Pro that sits back there that's always on needs to be charged almost every other day. Definitely not a fair comparison because this is always playing music and doing other things. But if you're concerned about the battery life of the iPad mini because it's a smaller device, I'm telling you that you're not gonna burn through this battery in a day like you would with your phone because it's still much larger than your phone is. Now, the question at the end of the day is, is it worth it to buy the iPad mini six right now in 2023? And I'm going to say no with a tiny asterisk. No, you probably shouldn't buy this for full price, but I'm definitely sure that there's a lot of people still trying to offload this guy here for much less than $4.99. And so if you're able to pick it up for a cheaper price and you actually know what you want to use the iPad mini six for, then I definitely would say to go ahead and grab this because it's just so nice to have a device of this size that can fit in a pocket or in your hoodie 
and can just travel with you anywhere and just a bigger alternative to having your phone. I honestly don't know how people read articles on their phone and like online shop and do all of those things. I guess I'm old school and I always just want a bigger screen. I've just never been a fan of doing that stuff on my cell phone. Now, as for the iPad mini seven rumors and leaks, I'm not too sure what has been rumored for the new device. Some people are saying that there's going to be a ProMotion display on it. So a 120 Hertz display screen. I don't think that that's going to be the case. Personally, I can't see Apple making this any anything close to their pro devices, unless it came out with an iPad mini pro, which would be unbelievable, but let's temper our expectations here. The iPad mini seven is probably just going to have a better chip, better battery life and a slightly improved rear camera or something like that. If you've got any questions about the iPad mini six, you know where to put them. Don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps me out, but that's it for me. Much love as always, throwing up two of them and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.